Uh, hi everyone, uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, my name is Suhas and uh, in this video we are actually be going to take a look at uh, one of the interesting projects in machine learning uh, which is basically to predict the heart disease in a patient and uh, we also use machine learning and deep learning uh, just to get an understanding about the project and uh, we see the introduction about uh, how we can basically use machine learning and uh, we have this data which was actually taken from Kegel and uh, we also do have uh, visualization which we can use uh, just to see some important features in our analysis uh, we also perform exploratory data analysis uh, which is the initial step in machine learning and uh, later we will test uh, various models uh, by dividing the overall data into training and the test part and finally compare which model is performing the best on the test data and finally we document the outcomes and uh, we also take into account the future scope of the project uh, just to see how we can further improve it uh, by maybe adding uh, more data or more features uh, which will help us to determine the outcome and uh, let us get started and in this project uh, i have loaded the uh, jupyter notebook uh, which is an important part in machine learning uh, or important tool which we can use in machine learning and uh, we have considered features like age uh, gender we have uh, the chest pain type we do have um, the slope of the peak and these are all some features uh, and finally we are going to take all these features and we are going to be predicting whether a person is going to suffer from a heart disease or not let me zoom in a little bit so that you can uh, further uh, see this and uh, these are all the libraries that we have uh, that uh, we need to first import we have imported the data uh, we read the first five rows of the data just to get an idea of the columns that we're dealing with and uh, we also take a look at uh, the presence of uh, various features and if we have any missing values or not in machine learning or in real world data science we always have these missing values uh, where the data is not always perfect and uh, therefore we have to take the right steps to make the data or clean the data uh, before we can uh, further uh, process it and uh, we also understand how our data is spread uh, we take a look at the age we find what is the average age in our data similarly we do find the standard deviation and a few other factors uh, similarly we do find the target value and uh, we take a look at uh, interesting features and uh, uh, and uh, this is the first part of machine learning which is exploratory data analysis where we try to find out uh, interesting patterns or trends in the data and uh, we basically count the total number of uh, patients who have a heart disease which is uh, an important thing to do because if we have imbalanced data where we have less number of patients who have a heart disease and uh, a large majority do not have a heart disease then it means that our model isn't going to learn a lot but in our case we do find that uh, the models are quite similar uh, which is good and uh, when we also take a look at the other features um, and uh, differentiate based on the gender uh, we can also see that uh, it's doing quite well and uh, now we are also going to take a look at the heat map which gives us the correlation between the various features and uh, how well related is each feature with the, all the other features and uh, we are going to just take a look at the regression plot all of this is an exploratory data analysis uh, this is an interesting pair plot uh, where we try to find out the relationship between uh, each feature and uh, we do the regression plot before we can actually perform the task and uh, these box plots can be used to find the outliers in the data where uh, all these dots represent the outliers which we should actually remove similarly we do it for the other feature called thalage and uh, age is also one feature uh, just to test if there are any outliers and outliers can be mainly because uh, of recording or uh, recording the values and uh, there might be some um, uh, like uh, like an error in the missing values or something like that and we divide the overall data into two parts training part and the test part and uh, the training part is around 70% uh, and the remaining 30% is the test part and uh, uh, we also perform uh, data normalization and standardization and uh, finally we apply the k nearest neighbors uh, model to fit and uh, see how well uh, this model is able to predict 
and uh, we take all of the metrics like accuracy recall precision similarly we do it for the logistic regression uh, we set the random state to 100 so that uh, we can replicate the same results every time we run this code where we do not get different outcomes when we run it again uh, right so we just uh, get the same code and uh, we append all that and we also go with naive base model which is one more machine learning model uh, we uh, basically uh, log all those values in these files and random forest classifier is also an interesting library and uh, finally we will uh, take a look at uh, how each of our models are uh, performing and here we do have knn which is nothing but k nearest neighbors we do have logistic regression we have naive base and we also have random forest classifier and uh, in each of these uh, they represent the accuracy of the model we have the f1 score the green indicates the precision score the red indicates the recall and this uh, purple indicates the roc auc score and uh, just by looking at this uh, we can decide which factor can uh, uh, influence the model and uh, which metric we should take before uh, finally taking the best model for our uh, prediction and uh, these are the normalized results which we see and uh, that is how we actually start with machine learning the first step is to perform feature engineering and also exploratory data analysis to find trends or uh, in the pattern and then we divide the data into 80 percent training part and the 20 percent test part and after that we use various models and then finally see uh, which model is actually performing the best on the test data and that is how we work with this the next step would be the deployment stage where uh, an end user can basically use our application and uh, then we can see the machine learning capabilities for the users as well. Uh, thank you for tuning in and uh, this is one of the projects that I worked on. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to comment down in the code cell below so that I can uh, get back and uh, answer your questions and queries. Thank you.